Hi, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, Scion Hero by White Wolf Game Studios. Scion had some expectations around it. A lot of people thought it was going to be exalted and modern, and it kind of is. The basic backstory to Scion is this, that you are quite literally the offspring of deities. Now, this is a game that is being broken down into three main pieces. There's Scion Hero, Scion Demigod, and Scion God. In these three, it sort of just displays the progression of your powers. You are quite literally the offspring of a god in this game. Now, it gives you a variety of pantheons to choose from. You could be the, you could be the child of an Egyptian pantheon. There's Greek, there's Norse, there's Aztec, Japanese, and Voodoo. Each, as the offspring of a deity, each you have certain powers, certain attributes. This is the lowest end power scale of the game. So you have knacks, which are sort of your legendary, your epic attributes, which means you're stronger, faster, tougher, and you have certain shticks that go with them. For example, if you're really, really smart, you might have a complete photographic memory, instant calculator, or you're super strong and only have 10 times what you should be able to, or you can ignore damage that you don't see coming, all these things are there. Those are your knacks that are kind of built in. Then there are the other powers that you really you have to fight or really work to be able to use. These are sort of the, the purviews that come from your deific parent. For example, if you're the offspring of Loki, then there's a certain amount of deception that you have access to. Whereas if you're a scion of somebody like Zeus, you have power over Storm. These, at this point in the game, you need a widget for. You need a real tool that comes with your deific parent. For example, one of the signature characters in this book, and I'll get back to the signature characters in a second, has a really big gun. He's the offspring of Thor, and he has a really big gun, and the hammer of that gun is a piece of Maholner, Thor's hammer. So that allows him access to certain powers and purviews and abilities that come with the Thor, abil Thor sort of set of skills or pantheon. Now, along these lines, the signature characters in this game, it really sets you up with six signature characters, one for each of the pantheons, and it almost assumes that you're using them because it provides you with a really lengthy adventure. I would actually call this a small campaign at the back that assumes that you are using those six characters. Now, could you use more if you wanted to? Yes, but it would take some work from your game master to shoehorn that in. That being said, this almost feels a bit like a pickup game to me, that this is a game that was sort of engineered to appeal to a non-gamer crowd. Like, okay, here's what it is, here's how you can do it, and oh, here are six characters for you to choose from. In terms of the engine, it is a scaled-down version of the storyteller system. They call it adventure storytelling. What it does is it is a dice pool where you pick up a number of 10-sided die according to your attribute plus skill and you roll them and you look for a target number seven or above. Each one is a success. This is a slightly watered down version of what you see in Exalted. For, so for those of you who were looking for Exalted Modern, this is your best choice. It is, it's still kind of a rules medium to rules heavy game, at least by my estimations. If you like a lot of crunch, in your combat when you can actually have to roll up to 15, 16 dice for things, then hey, this is really a game that's not bad for you. I like what they do with initiative, which is it works sort of on a clock system where if you are really fast and you have a fast weapon, you can almost use that weapon three or four times in the same round while other people are still waiting to act. It's a very interesting take on urban fantasy. The backstory here is that the Titans, who are the beings that came before the gods, they're sort of primal chaos, they're sort of the original owners of the world, it borders on Lovecraftian there, are starting to wake up. Now, they were actually imprisoned, or at least the gates to their impri imprisonment was in the underworld. And as they've gotten out, it's disrupted the paths through the underworld. So the dead are starting to walk on Earth a bit more. And you sort of, you have to, as characters, your job is to deal with the Titans, which are at this point kind of beyond your ability to fight. The Titans spawn, those are more set up for you. And you can kind of pay attention and see that some of these Titan spawns are things that you might recognize from mythology. For example, the Nemean lion that Hercules had to fight. There's a Nemean archetype that you can just apply straight across any critter and fight a big, mean, scary critter along those lines. Your job is to fight the Titans, the Walking Dead, although you can put the Walking Dead to your own use, and the Titans spawn, sort of acting as the guard on Earth 
for the, so the Titans can't get into Overworld. So you've got Underworld, World, and Overworld. Overworld being where the gods are. And they don't have to fight a battle on two fronts. What is supposed is that this is the first game, like I said, in Scion Demigod, which is due out sometime later in 2007. In Scion Demigod, the point is that the heavens have gone quiet. You scale your power up even more and can now start to do more as you start to fight your way into Underworld and Overworld to a certain extent to fight off the powers there. And then in, finally in Scion God or Scion Deity, what you do there is you have the opportunity to actually ascend into Godhood. This is an interesting take on urban fantasy. It is certainly not a low-powered game, but it is worth looking into if you want a, a nice sort of a high action movie end take on a pretty well-established genre. That's, it's a really interesting approach to making legends and myths in your own game. If you have any questions or comments, things you'd like to see reviewed, please feel free to contact us at knweagle at yahoo.com. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming. <laughs>